So we have finally got the boat all put back together, painted. Now we need to haul it out and paint the bottom with any fouling paint so it doesn't grow a bunch of algae and scum and barnacles and stuff on the bottom while it's sitting here all summer. The boat's not 100% put back together. I still have this hatch out of the floor and the engine box I'm still painting. The rest of the boat is ready to go. We're gonna run it over to Ventnor Marina here in Pasadena. They're gonna haul it out on the travel lift, block it, power wash it, and then I'm gonna paint the bottom and put zincs on all the metal running gear. travel lift worked is at the marina they have this super narrow little slip and they lower this big motorized gantry with two straps down into the slip and then you drive over the straps shut your boat off and then they raise the slings up and then they carry the boat off it's a little nerve-wracking like pretty much every time they do it i've done it a million times I, it's still weird to see your boat hanging from strings and that's how they pick up all the boats that are too big for trailers like almost all the boats here we'll take a look at the bottom it really isn't that bad i paint it every year so it's pretty clean but it's good to always put a fresh coat on it especially as much as we use these boats there is a little bit you see barnacles starting to form on the propeller and this little bit of like coral stuff which i have never seen grow before back here in the creeks but the water has been really really salty lately and i think I suspect that's why this kind of coral is starting to grow on the prop. But as you can see, these are the sacrificial anodes for all the running gear. The zincs just like we put in a crab pot, and they are mushy and need to be replaced. So we'll get two flat zincs for here. The one on the rudder fell completely off, and then we'll put a couple here on the prop shaft as well. I'm really hoping we can have this project done and over with in the next day or two so we can put the boat back overboard and start setting some crab pots. It's that time of year. I'm getting the urge. We gotta go. Crabs catch. There's a little bit of braided fishing line on my prop shaft here and I definitely gotta get that off. I'll tell you what, this braided fishing line plays hell on these cutlass bearings, which is the, the rubber carrier bearing that carries the prop shaft through your strut here. This stuff will get up in there and then delaminate the rubber from the rest of the bushing and the whole thing will fall out. I know that because I've done that like three times. As you can see, my sacrificial anodes here are doing their job. They're all burned up. There's definitely an electrolysis problem over there at the marina that we were trying to solve. But if I hadn't had these on here, my prop would look like this. Pro tip here, if you ever go to buy a boat that's been sitting in the water for a long time, make sure you ask them when the last time it was hauled, painted, and zinced was, because if it hasn't been hauled, you haven't put zincs on it in 10 years, then a lot of your running gear is gonna need to be replaced. Your prop, everything's gonna be fatigued from electrolysis, or just completely ate up with holes in it, look like Swiss cheese. You can see the old zincs are still in pretty good shape. We'll probably get another decade or so out of them, but I figure I might replace them. Tell me this drill just died just now. I don't have another battery. Are you kidding me? Dang it. You got a drill? Thank goodness. Shankin's bailing me out once again. We back in business. I've been using the same sinister can of paint for years. Not sure what it is or what's in it, but it works pretty good. Don't smell it too much. You'll get not sober. Ooh, yummy. Have you got barnacles you couldn't get off? Just paint over them. Ain't no big deal. This is by far the best she's gonna look all year. Well, I actually did get the boat all zinced and painted and ready to go back in the water in one day. So I'm getting a ride back over. They're gonna put it back in. We're gonna go get it ready, set some crab pops on Monday. When you live on a peninsula like we do, sometimes it's faster 
to get a ride on a boat than it is to hop in a car to get places because there's only one road on and one road off pretty much everywhere around here. So getting a ride, best Uber ever, five stars for sure. There she is. Reverse, 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 reverse. Oh, jeez. We're good, thanks. I'll see you over there. Boy, that is unfortunate. I saw that coming. Old green jeans pulling over a jet ski that was blowing through a six mile an hour zone. Back in she goes. We're off. Sure hope they don't pull me over. Smile and wave, smile and wave. That's my, uh, that's my strategy. We're gonna put the rack back on the back of the boat so we go set some crab pots. I had the hinges powder coated. So this is just a piece of I-beam filled down the center with a piece of bar stock welded on top. And then there's a hole drilled in this six by six piece of wood here. And this slides into here and that makes a hinge. When I built the rack, couldn't find hinges big enough. So I had to make them out of garbage. So I gotta make a new system to hold the top of this rudder. It's wobbling all over the place. This is what's regularly bolted here, literally since I got this boat. The bushing for this is made out of a piece of PVC filleted down the center and then put on either side into here and then bolted up. And the bushings just get cracked and worn out and then it wobbles and it's actually caused a crack on the hull from the rudder wobbling. I think what we're gonna do is get a piece of angle like this bolted just like that and then have a piece of hard plastic like Delrin material in the back side and in the front side to hold the top of the shaft. I have to measure my shaft here. I'm gonna guess three inches. Yep, just as I suspected. Three inches. What's the measurement? I don't know, I put my finger on it. It's close enough. Electricity. There we go. So we got our pieces here together. Make that hole. One on the back, one on the front. Now I gotta figure out how to hold them there. Either maybe bolt to the bottom piece into here and modifying this here to hold this one. Not sure exactly what to do yet. So I'm thinking maybe if I have bolts that go through both of these to hold them together, then I knock this piece off at the bottom, I bolt this on the here, and then I have some washers and a plate that sticks down to here. These bolts also hold that plate on and then we'll be able to plate this as well. That's pretty complicated, but it's kind of a unique problem. I need to go find a piece of plate, preferably with holes already in it. So we got this hokey mess. Found these brackets because it's a pain in the ass to drill stainless. So I'm gonna put a spacer in here, drill both of these. It'll hold both of these together on either side of the rudder shaft. Bolt this plate back up. We'll see, hopefully it'll be enough. This stuff is not easy to drill. Here we have it. Is it a little hokey? Yeah, sure. But you gotta build it out of what you got. It's either gonna work fantastic or I'm gonna start it up and this thing's gonna tear itself to bits in a matter of minutes, so. This thing actually appears to work pretty well. 
top isn't rattling anymore. Not bad. Not bad. We are setting some crab pots tomorrow, but there is a lot to do before that. I have to get fuel in the boat. I have to go pick up a freezer and a soft crab refrigerator. I also have to go across the key bridge and pick up bait. And I need to build this cage around my trailer here. I bought all this lumber and I'm gonna build a big cage so we don't have to tie the pots to the trailer anymore when we're moving them, because that takes forever. I swear, every day we have to use this trailer, we spend a combined hour messing with these stupid ropes. And sometimes pots still fall off. So, gotta build that cage and then load the trailer and bring it down to the marina. And I have a feeling that that cage is gonna be one of those projects that is gonna take a lot longer than I think it's going to. First step, getting some fuel. This thing is so heavy. Holy cow. Oh All right, got that one out. Now I just got to drive over the key bridge with the uh, the old ice machine in the back. I hope it's not too windy. Funny thing is I actually bought these ice machines from the place that was my very favorite place to ever go as a kid. Super cool snowballs. I had been going there forever and I'm good friends with the son of the people that own it. But they were getting rid of some of these ice machines. Oh my God, I just had to stop at my lot and tie this thing down some more because it almost fell out of my truck on the highway. I went around a little bend and the wind blew. The whole thing tipped up and I had to swerve the truck to get it to lay flat, so. Whew, almost a disaster. Right, we're getting the trailer hooked up with the refrigerator in the back and the trailer's covered in lumber. I know this seems a little ridiculous. That's because it is absolutely ridiculous. I'm curious for scientific reasons to see if these boards are gonna stay on without strapping them down. Oh, yeah, it's a little way out there. All right, so I'm building this cage around the trailer for the crab pots and the problem is this board is way, way out because I built this so it's not right and as you can see we'd be sticking like a foot out at the top of here instead of fixing the actual trailer we're just going to take a chainsaw and cut out this so the board can stand straight just like that one that ain't bad it's kind of actually really good you can see we had to dig it in there to get it to go straight or else would be like that quite a gap at the top it's done the giant crab pot cage we'll see if this was worth the headache we got it all done trailer cage built freezer bought set up installed and running and full of bait load of pots hawks fuel line the whole nine tomorrow is the first day of crabbing 2023 Cannot believe it. Really feels like we just put these things on land. Not sure I feel bad.